Hey friends, how's everyone doing today? Hope you're all having an amazing day so far. Tammy M coming to you from TammyMCoaching.com and what I want to talk to you about today is a proven method for healing the five core symptoms of codependency. A proven method for healing the five core symptoms of codependency. Something caught in my throat here, forgive me, let me just take a sip of water. If we haven't met before, I'm going to take a quick moment to introduce myself. Once again, my name is Tammy M. I am an empowerment coach for women. I help women break free from painful relationship patterns through a proven eight-week process called the Freedom Class. And if you want some information on that, you can go on over to www.tammymcoaching.com. All the deets on the program are there. We've got another group opening, opening up in a couple of weeks on the 21st of September, actually. Um, so yeah, if you want some information, you can drop me a comment, send me a private message, or go on on over to TammyMCoaching.com and there's a button at the bottom of the page there to apply for um, to book a free strategy call and apply for the program so the five core symptoms of codependency you know it's really interesting I was having a conversation the other day with this really really lovely woman super charming she wanted some information on the program wicked smart you know I've seen her Facebook pro profile drop-dead gorgeous very well employed um, you know a woman who clearly has her shit together in many regards and nonetheless she is in the process of divorcing a narcissist so nonetheless she ended up going down that track of being in um, a marriage with a destructive narcissist an emotional manipulator someone who is you know abusive on on a number of levels right what I found really interesting about the conversation was for all the information that she had about him for all the information that she had about the DSM-5, for all the information that she had about all of the various mental health disorders that fall under this umbrella, she did not know what it meant to be codependent. She did not understand, she didn't know what the word codependent meant. She didn't know at all what it meant to be codependent. And I was struck by that and then I remembered, and no judgment, I mean we don't know what we don't know and it's all good, it's cool, right? But it occurred to me, I remembered back a number of years ago, prior to my recovery, so going back say 15 plus years ago, I'm in my early to mid 30s, I'm very well employed, doing really, really well at my professional sales job at the time. I have two properties, a lakefront cottage and a townhouse condo, beautiful, backing onto a beautiful park. I've got a brand new vehicle, got some money in the bank, I've got all the nice clothes, I'm in super shape because I'm a compulsive fitness addict. And everything on the outside looks really, really good. And I have no idea what it means to be a codependent. I have no idea what it means to be a codependent. I start hearing that word get thrown around and I'm like, what is that? And what's interesting looking back now all these years later at that girl that I was back then where everything looked so good on the outside, right? And I'm real bright and I'm succeeding in certain areas of my life. I was a champion codependent, a champion codependent and had no idea what it meant to be codependent. Certain areas of my life looked really good, especially from the outside, but other areas were a complete freaking train wreck and disaster. In particular, my romantic life as I attracted one destructive narcissist after another and dealt with the havoc that that wreaks on your life. But I had no idea what it meant to be codependent at that time. And I just find that, you know, really, really interesting. And that conversation I had with this lady the other day sort of brought that back to the forefront that we can have so much going on and working for us in some areas and we can be wicked smart and wicked bright and very capable and competent in certain areas. Yet our lives are absolutely and completely unmanageable and we have no idea why, and we have no idea why. Thank God I found my way into uh, recovery, 
and um, got on that track. And today I fully understand what it means to be a codependent. I fully understand what it means to be a recovering codependent and the difference between untreated and recovering because recovery is a lifelong journey. As you, uh, if you tune into me regularly, you hear me say often. So I fully understand today, thank God, because the quality of my life from the inside out, it's like, it's a completely different world. It's a completely different life. So I am eternally grateful that today I understand what that means. So I wanted to share with you, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I believe to be a very powerful proven method for dealing with um, and healing the five core symptoms of codependency the five core symptoms of codependency. So we're gonna get into that in a moment. Before I continue, I'm just gonna say hi to some friends I see hopping on here. Heather, Heather, welcome, how are you? Regina, my friend, nice to see you, thanks for hopping on. I see a whole bunch of other faces, um, but can't see, I don't have my glasses on, so can't make out who they are. Friends, thank you for joining. Do me a favor, if you're catching me live, drop me a one. If you're catching the replay, drop a two. And if you're new to my live broadcast, let me know you're new and let me know where you're coming in from so I can reach out and say hello. So I just have some notes here. There's some things that I didn't want to forget to say uh, with regards to, you know, being codependent and what an awful way to go through life, especially if you're not in the know. Probably worse actually if you are in the know and you're not doing anything about your recovery program and your healing journey um, and you know that would probably be even more uncomfortable maybe maybe ignorance is bliss there I'm not sure it certainly wasn't bliss for me it certainly wasn't bliss for me recovery is about becoming conscious it's about waking up and that process revolutionized my life revolutionized my life so again I'm very very grateful so First and foremost, what is it? What is codependency? Because that was the question she asked me. Again, wicked bright, drop dead gorgeous, super successful woman in the process of divorcing a full blown narcissist, really well educated about the DSM-5 and all kinds of mental health issues and has no idea what it means to be codependent. So codependency, first and foremost, is a breakdown in the relationship with ourselves. That's the bottom line. It's a breakdown in the relationship with ourselves. Now, Pia Melody, considered to be one of the foremost experts on the subject, one of, you know, one of the pioneers in the recovery movement who really brought the understanding of codependency and the para-alcoholic and all of that information into, you know, I don't know if I'd call it mainstream back then in the 70s, but started to bring it to the forefront. She describes codependency as being, quote unquote, a dis-ease process brought on that originates in, brought on by, that originates in childhood trauma. I'm paraphrasing there a little bit, but that's essentially what she says. It is a disease process that stems from childhood trauma, whether that's benign neglect, outright abuse, um, a, you know, attachment trauma, abandonment, varying degrees of abuse we as humans on planet Earth can, you know, experience, right? So, you know, what's interesting about some of the ladies that I chat with um, on a regular basis is they don't even recognize that they actually were neglected and abused as children because you know for all intents and purposes a lot of stuff was done right you know parents who really were well intended doing the best they could with the resources they had that's not all of us not all of us have had that experience but many of us you know have had that experience and there's nothing specific to point to you know maybe our parents were dry drunks uh you know untreated adult children of alcoholics themselves but you know not drinking so there's no alcohol in the point in the home to point to but if they're untreated adult alcoholics trust me because I grew up surrounded by a whole bunch of them drinking and not drinking you're dealing with people who have mental health issues you're dealing you know varying degrees right these issues are not black and white but you know when you're grow when you are raised in that type of family and an environment as an example many examples we could pull from but as an example what happens is these folks are emotionally spiritually psychologically 
unavailable. They are unable to attach and nurture the child in a way that causes them to grow into a healthy sense of self, a healthy sense of self-esteem. So just by virtue of growing up surrounded by emotionally unavailable people for what, you know, there, there's any number of reasons why that could be, right? Whether or not you had a narcissistic parent, parents who landed high, both, on, you know, high on the end of narcissism for whatever reason, parents who were busy dealing with sick, aging parents themselves, parents who were dealing with their own workaholism or you know the need to work two or three jobs you know a single mom just trying to keep up like how emotionally available is someone in that position necessarily going to be to their kids especially if we're talking a few decades back where people didn't have the information that we have today right so again codependency stems from childhood trauma whether that's benign neglect from well-intended caretakers or parents or not, or outright abuse, not black and white, right? Spectrum, continuum, whatever that is. That is how codependency um, is born within the individual. And basically what happens is because of the trauma, whether it is a severe trauma, a number of traumas, a sequence of traumas, a number of severe traumas, whatever that is, as a survival mechanism, the precious, authentic, true self, true self, the inner child, goes into hiding, literally, in the psyche, dives deep into the unconscious, goes into hiding to survive, to not have to feel the pain of its environment, goes into hiding, and a false codependent self emerges. A false codependent self emerges and starts behaving towards itself, others, and the world in very maladaptive ways, in dysfunctional ways. Again, not black or white, right? But bottom line is the true authentic essence, the inner child, which is now the wounded inner child, goes into hiding and a false codependent self emerges and goes through life relating to self and others in maladaptive ways, in dysfunctional ways, and often progressively so. So that is basically the foundation of codependency and how it all gets started. What else do I have here? Um, like other addictive processes, because this really is an addictive process, like other addictive processes, left untreated, it gets worse, never better. Left untreated, it gets worse, never better. So if you know that you have this issue to some degree or another, and you're in your 20s or 30s or 40s, when would now be a good time to start doing something about it? Like when would now be a good time to start doing something about it? Because it ain't going to go away by itself. This stuff is not going to magically disappear when you get the promotion or the next right guy or gal shows up or, you know, whatever it is that you're hoping on the outside is finally going to materialize to fix what's going on with you. It doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. Trust me, I tried for years doesn't work that way, right? So it gets worse, never better. That's really important information for us to have. Left untreated, it gets worse, never better. It will progress. And I have seen in my own life, in my family and in the family of others, front row seat, what that looks like after many decades. It's not pretty. It's not pretty. They progress into the realm of destructive narcissism themselves. They can be incredibly rigid, controlling, defensive, just painful to deal with, painful to be around. Just having a conversation about the weather is hard freaking work with someone who is a severely progressed codependent. And if they are in your close inner circle, your immediate family, you know, what, however that shows up, very difficult to deal with. Very, very, very difficult to deal with. You don't want that to become you if you know that because of the nature of your 
family of origin experiences, your life experiences so far, this is the track that you're on, there is another way. The freedom class, by the way, a little self-promotion here, but it's true. I'm going to give it to you straight. The freedom class, by the way, is a proven process, a proven process for healing the five core symptoms of codependency. It's a proven process. Eight weeks catapult you into a whole new dimension, give you a whole wicked huge buffet of tools to use to set you on a path of serious recovery and altering your life for the better from the inside out. So that is the proven process aspect, but let's talk about the five core symptoms of codependency because as I rant and ramble, maybe you're still not sure. You're not quite sure. You know, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So we've all, you know, if, if you've had any concept of what codependency actually is, you might think it's this when it's actually that. So let's clarify. I'm going to grab a tissue. Whenever I go live, I get the sniffles. I don't know what's up with that. I hope it's not like an allergy to live broadcast would not be odd and I'm gonna have a, sh a sip of my protein shake here and then we'll continue alrighty you guys getting some value out of this if you're getting some value let me know give me a love heart shower if you're getting some value out of this so the five core symptoms of codependency again not black or just like narcissism just like destructive narcissism these are not black and white issues this is on a continuum and codependency manifests in many ways. But these are five core symptoms that you want to look out for. Codependents are unable to experience appropriate levels of self-esteem. Codependents are unable to experience appropriate levels of self-esteem. So I was talking about myself prior to recovery and prior to even knowing what the hell a codependent was, even though I was a freaking first class champion poster child for codependency. Outwardly, I looked very confident. Put me at a negotiation table, you know, or in a closing situation, you know, put me in a lot of situations and I was strong. I was confident. Inwardly, whole other world. Again, false persona, false codependent persona emerges at a very young age as a result of childhood trauma. So what mine looked like, part of that was outwardly very confident. The truth was inwardly a whole other choice and that was evident a whole other story and that was evidenced by my romantic choices the kind of shit I put up with in my friendships um, with business associates uh, my family of origin the role that I continued to volunteer for put my hand up for until I was 40 until I was 40 my friends okay so unable to experience appropriate levels of self-esteem even if we are outwardly appearing very confident because we've been very well practiced at doing this our whole lives we know we're on to ourselves we know if inwardly deep down inside that's a whole other story and the truth is it's shown up in our lives especially our romantic lives by virtue of who it is that we are involved with two <clears throat> trouble setting functional boundaries with other people Trouble setting functional boundaries with other people. That's number two of the, the five core symptoms of codependency. Three, they have difficulty owning their own reality. Difficulty owning their own reality. Right into, right into you know, my first few years of you know, serious recovery work. I needed external validation. Thank God for sponsorship and the fact that I had some really kick-ass sponsors, especially in early days. But I needed someone to reflect back to me what the hell it was that I was seeing or not seeing or thinking or not thinking or feeling or not feeling because I had difficulty experiencing and expressing my own, difficulty owning my own reality, difficulty owning my own reality. I had been gaslit so much in my lifetime from such a young age. Gaslighting is when emotional manipulators and destructive narcissists cause you to doubt your reality. They do a thing to you and then it never happened. Even though you know it happened, they say a thing to you and then it never happened even though you know it happened. You have that happen enough in your life, especially when it starts at a very young age. 
I don't care who you are. That's going to mess with you, right? That's going to mess with you. So it causes us to have difficulty owning our own reality, which is why codependency recovery is so important. Surrounding ourselves with safe people, safe people, not just any people, safe people in codependency recovery. So important. People show you they're not safe, light and love and back the hell away from that. Number four, unable to take care of their adult dependency issues around needing and wanting. The five core symptoms of codependency. Number four, unable to take care of their adult dependency issues around needing and wanting. That's a whole other great big huge topic. I'm gonna to try not to go down too many rabbit holes here today, but you know if you have this. You may be very competent in some areas and not so much in others. Adult children of whatever it is, whether that's adult children of alcoholism or and adult children, the syndrome, is another way of speaking to codependency. By the way, it's all one in the same, right? So adult children, hyper responsible, uber irresponsible, nowhere in between. Maybe hyper responsible in some areas, complete train wreck in others, which was very much the story of my life pre-recovery. Not a lot of in between there, which means that we are then able, unable to take care of our adult dependency issues around needing and wanting. Whether that's generating a, you know, what we need in terms of a consistent income for ourselves, whether that's putting ourselves in a position of having to rely on unreliable reliable people in any way, shape or form, whether that's unable to esteem ourselves, therefore always looking for outside approval, jumping through hoops, and we're always looking for it from the people who have absolutely zero ability or intention to give it to us, um, unable to take care of ourselves, our adult dependency issues around needing and wanting. And there are plenty of needs and wants that are healthy as human beings here on planet Earth. And because we've been so messed with as codependents, we don't know what's appropriate and what's inappropriate in terms of needing and wanting. And we think we don't have the right to certain needs and wants that are perfectly healthy, perfectly healthy. It's a whole other tangent. I'll go, I, I'm trying not to go down too many rabbit holes here today. Now, the five core symptoms of codependency. Number five, codependents are unable to experience and, and express their reality in moderation unable to experience and express their reality in moderation. They're either shut down or exploding. Shut down or exploding. Going through life uber numb, disconnected, totally disconnected from their feelings, survival mechanism they learned a very long time ago. Or feeling everything so intensely and hyper reactive to it all unable to experience and express their reality in moderation. All or nothing, all or nothing. Stuff, 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 kaboom. Stuff, 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 kaboom. I remember a woman who was like, I don't know, 18, 19 years into her version of recovery, going kaboom in the most abusive way on me one day and her rationalization for that almost two decades almost two decades into her recovery was that's the way I am I take I take I take I repress I repress I repress and then I go freaking bananas and I turn into like this major psychotic animal and I was shocked but that's just an example of what can happen when we say we're in recovery when we're going through the motions when we're doing the bare minimum but we don't actually do the deep inner healing work because anyone who's been truly in recovery and has truly been doing the deep inner healing work doesn't swing like that doesn't swing like that it doesn't take 20 years to get to a place of personal peace and balance and the ability to express your um your reality in moderation no matter what the hell's going on right so just an example we can pay lip service to recovery i have people tell me all the time i've been recovering 
and they haven't even begun. I'm healing and they haven't even begun. Don't lie to yourself, friends. Don't lie to yourself. This is your life. And the truth is, for many of us, this is life or death stuff. This is life or death stuff. So don't tell yourself a bunch of bullshit and lies about where you're at when you're not there. Do yourself a favor and get real. Even if you don't get real with anyone else, get real with yourself. Your life depends on it. And you deserve to be happy, joyous, and free, as they would say in 12-step. You deserve that. You can have it. You can have it. So, my friends, that is the five core symptoms of codependency. If any of that resonates with you on any level and you have any questions, you can always feel free to drop, feel free to drop me a comment or send me a private message. If you are still not sure as to whether or not you're actually a full-fledged codependent. The reality is we live on planet Earth. The vast majority of people are to some degree. This is just the truth. Just the truth. Experts estimate 85 to 95% of us have grown up in dysfunctional homes here on planet Earth, which means that we learned We've experienced some sort of trauma somewhere along the way, some more than others for sure, and we've learned maladaptive ways, dysfunctional ways of relating to ourselves and others. Now here's a real litmus test for you. Never mind what's going on inside, because you might at this time still be rather disconnected from the real reality of that. And I, I know because I, I was there, I was there at a certain point. But our outside is always a reflection of our inside. Our outside is always a reflection of our inside. What we are attracting into our life, what we are attracted to, what we are compelled towards, and what is showing up on the radar, always, always a reflection of what's going on on the inside. And as you've heard me say before, probably 95% of the game of life is unconscious, right? So if you wanna know what's going on in your unconscious mind, have a look at your life. If you are now, enmeshed with a narcissist, a destructive narcissist, an emotional ma manipulator, an abusive person on any level. Romantically, in your family, in your friendships, in your business relationships, in any area of your life. If you are now or have been enmeshed, involved in that type of relationship, you, my friend, are a codependent. You are. It's the good news because once we tell ourselves the truth, we can now actually get about the business of doing something about it, right? We can now actually get about the business of making some real progress and changes towards a healthier and happier and more peaceful life for ourselves. So if you are now or have been in that type of relationship, you are a codependent and that is the good news. And the reason I can say that with such certainty is because I know for a fact that if you weren't a codependent, you would not be doing the dance with the emotional manipulator. You wouldn't be doing the dance with the, destruct the destructive narcissist. You wouldn't be in the room. You wouldn't be giving these people the time of day because healthy people, like truly healthy people, like people who really have high self-esteem and a solid sense of self-love, they look at that kind of bullshit no matter who it's coming from. Their parents, their kids, their boss, their colleague, their client, their, their, their new dating relationship, whoever. Healthy people look at that stuff, see it for what it is, and walk away. They take care of themselves. They walk away. So if you're not sure yet you've got this proof in your outer, outer world in terms of evidence, again, the good news is tell yourself the truth because it will set you, set you free. You are a codependent and there's a whole lot that you can do about it. And that we address in the freedom class on a deep, deep dive, my friends. And it is a, an eight week proven process for healing, dealing with, up-leveling, clearing the five core symptoms of codependency. And if you'd like some info on that, once again, you can drop me a comment, send me a private message, or go on over to TammyMCoaching.com for the details. And at the, end, at the bottom of the page, there is a link to book a free strategy call. 
If you got some value out of this, don't forget to like, comment, and or share. Once again, my name is Tammy M. I am an empowerment coach for women. I help women break free from painful relationship patterns through a proven eight-week process, the Freedom Class. And with that, I will say thank you, friends, for hopping on. I appreciate all of you. And I will look forward to catching up with you probably Wednesday. I'm shooting for Monday, Wednesday, Friday these days as uh, as my schedule allows to uh, to connect with you through live broadcast. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday is, um, is what I'm shooting for. So I'll catch up with you on Wednesday. And in the meantime, know your value. Know your value and unlock your freedom. Mwah. Much love. Bye for now.